A very good evening to you and welcome to Primetime News. I'm Nicola De Zoiza and this is your top story. Minister Malik Samaru Vikrama admits that Arjun Mahindran commenced discussions on Singapore FTA. Former Minister SB's revelation on an attempted conspiracy. Trading of securities of MTD Walker's PLC suspended. What is the fuel pricing formula? Leader of JVP raises a question in Parliament. Report on World Heritage Cascade System compiled by News First and the University of Peradeniya published. And on our top story, a number of development projects under the Sirisara Pivisuma program in the Trincomalee district were vested with the public under the auspices of President Maithripala Sirisena. The first electricity fence built with concrete pillars in place of tree trunks in Sri Lanka was declared open today by President Maitri Pala Sirisena. The fence is 30 kilometers in length and it was built with a cost of 19 million rupees. The fence was built by the Sri Lanka army within a short time span of three weeks. Following the event, the president inspected the fence. The newly renovated Gumaran Kadavala Bakmi Vava was also vested with the public by the president. This renovation project, which incurred a cost of 15 million rupees, is expected to nourish 66 acres of farmland. We now have an important president who will unite the country. Our president believes that the country should be united and not divided. People will be united and power will be awarded to the people living in their respective divisions. That needs to become a reality and we expect it in the future. Look at the speech made by opposition leader Sambandhan. He says power should be delegated with no division in the country and its people. A part of what I wanted to state about power delegation is that during all regimes that came into power after 1947, how many ministers have been appointed to the North and the East? If that had happened, the war would have most probably not taken place. North and Eastern Province MPs were used to protect control of the government. However, the problems of the people in the North and East did not reduce. The political leadership that was required was not given power. During the event, the president distributed medical equipment worth 30 million rupees to the intensive care unit of the Kantali General Hospital. Meanwhile, the president also handed over the water cleaning center, which was constructed under the Jaisumanara Mahavihare in Trinkumali. Meanwhile, in more local news, SLFP MPs who defected from the government convened a media briefing in Colombo today. Let's have a look at what they had to say. Sri Lanka Mahabanku. When we speak of the central bank bond scam, if not for Maitri, they would have appointed a lawyer for an inquiry and say nothing happened. They did so by appointing three lawyers from Sirikota. But Maitri opened it again, and Mr. Clean, who caused grave destruction, Ranil Vikram Singer, became the thief. This is not something small. There appears to be a conspiracy to eliminate head of state using Mark Andura Madush and the LTTE. When one looks at the manner in which Ranjit Madhubu Bandara behaved, the silence of Sagar Ratnayaka and the lethargic attitude of the Prime Minister, it is clear a conspiracy created by Ranil is behind these incidents. The investigations regarding this is quite simple. All they have to do is to identify if the voice in the recordings belong to DIG Nalika Silva. The government is also connected to this. The original copy of the 90th Amendment states that if anything happens to the president, the speaker is the one who would become the acting president. But the copy that went to the Supreme Court states that the power will be vested with the Prime Minister. Thereby, the Prime Minister will be able to sit in the chair of the President without facing an election. The Sakuna Gama model village built under the Samata Savana Yali Pibidena Udagamana program was vested with the public today. The event was carried out under the auspices of the Minister of Housing and Construction and Deputy Leader of the United National Party, Sajid Premadasa. Today marked the launch of the 126th model village. The village consisting of 15 villagers also has issues due to the lack of clean drinking water and absence of a proper road system. The minister handed over land deeds and distributions of spectacles to the locals in the area. 
I promise that at the end of my program to build 20,000 Udaga Manas, there will not be a single family in my motherland without a home. You know, over the last few weeks, the former subject minister criticized me. Before long, his own political leader humiliated him. He did so in India. That is why you say that the truth will prevail. State Minister of Fisheries and Aquatic Resource Development and Rural Economic Affairs Dilip Vidyarachi also addressed the event. I would like to tell the whole country that Sajid Premadasa is the only UNP candidate that can win the presidency. He has won the hearts of the people all over the island. That is why in 2020 he will come to a revolutionary leadership position. He is the leader who nurtured you and I here in Hambantota over the last 24 years. We will work towards making him our leader. The Presidential Commission of Inquiry into Malpractices that took place at Sri Lankan Airlines, Sri Lankan Catering and Mihin Lanka convened again earlier today. The Commission looked into matters surrounding the e-commerce transactions at the airlines. Testifying before the Commission, a manager that Sri Lankan Airlines had chosen a firm called eFutures for the purpose of managing their online reach. The airline signed two agreements with the firm for the purpose of maintenance and development of the airline's website. Each contract was valued in the millions of rupees. According to the witness, even though the said firm had been signed onto a contract for a period of three years, Sri Lankan Airlines had then signed an agreement with a new company to provide the same services. When questioned by the Commission on whether or not the airline could have carried out these operations in-house, the witness testified that the airline could have done so and made savings in the process. He added that further, as per his knowledge, these operations are usually carried out in-house in the case of most other airlines. The Commission will reconvene tomorrow. Addressing the 2018 Chengdu International Investment Summit, Deputy Minister of Industry and Commerce, Buddhika Patirana, expressed the following views. Way before China had started making invitations for investments, that Sri Lanka moved towards a free market economy. Mr. Howard Briggins, who was American ambassador in Colombo, the financial capital, from 1977 to 1980, one said, quote, Honorable J.R. Javardana did remarkable things for Sri Lanka. The whole economy turned around if they had moved towards a free market economy. Ten years earlier, Sri Lanka might have been one of the export success, unquote. Moving further down memory lane, I wish to state that fact that the People's Republic of China and the Democratic Socialist Republic of Sri Lanka has a remarkable historical bond following Sri Lanka's independence. Then known as Ceylon, independence and self-rule was achieved for Sri Lanka from the British Empire. In the era of former Prime Minister Honorable Dadi Senanayake, who represent our political party, the China-Sri Lanka rubber rice pact was signed with the initiation of the... An event was held to launch the regional flagship report of the World Bank titled South Asia's Hotspots. The new report focuses on analyzing the impact of climate change on living standards. The event was attended by the principal author of the report, Muthukumar Amani. Interestingly, we found out that almost for all the South Asian countries we studied, uh, they are the countries are already beyond their tipping points, which suggests that any further increase in temperature, other things remaining the same, will only lead to a declining living standard. In, in Sri Lanka, the living standards will go down by about 5%, and even under, even uh, in the worst case scenario, uh, it will be a decline of uh, about 7% by 2050. And if you translate the decline in, in terms of GDP, we find that by 2050, and under the worst case scenario, GDP will decline by about 7.7%. This can get the governments to focus on specific locations where they, they need to make investments. For example, uh, we find that Jaffna, Putalan, Manar, they are emerging as uh, top or most impacted districts with an expected declining living standards for almost almost 10%. If you improve educational attainment by 30%, which actually the, the climate impact goes down from 7% uh, to only 2.6%. So actually you are able to uh, make uh, the households more resilient. Welcome back to the news. The economy of the country is worsening day by day. Every citizen of the country is burdened by a high cost of living. 
The depreciation of the rupee against the US dollar has been on a record low and views were expressed in parliament with this regard. The dollar is sold at 169.05 rupees. In 2014, the dollar was sold at 131 rupees. The stock market is collapsing. You can request for a debate if you want. I can't pull up a non-existing problem. Let me ask you one question at a time. Do you agree that the financial sector of this country is collapsing? Tell me the action you are going to take when the people are in crisis due to the rupee depreciating. This is not a crisis only in Sri Lanka. When compared with other currencies in the world, the dollar value has increased. The rupee has depreciated by 10.43 in 2012. The rupee has not reduced this time even when we are in so much of problems. It has only been reduced by 6%. We are not talking about a short-term problem. Understand that in 2015 the dollar was 105 rupees. When we were paying for LCS, the cash margin for banks were increased by 100%. We believe that this will reduce the number of vehicles imported. So far it has been depreciated by 7 0.4% in Sri Lanka. This might depreciate even more during the next few weeks. Next year and in 2020, we have settled a foreign loan of 4.5 billion US dollars. 80% of this loan amount is what the Rajapaksas obtained. There are beautiful words like Vision 2020, Enterprise Sri Lanka, but that is not the reality. The government doesn't hear the problems of the people. There is no point in comparing our country with the rest of the world. A government was established to face these issues. The Monetary Board of the Central Bank imposed a 100% margin deposit requirement against letters of credit opened with the commercial bank for the imports of motor vehicles, which are generally used for non-commercial purposes. The Central Bank says the decision to impose the margin deposit requirement is based on the recent developments which, if not addressed, could threaten macroeconomic stability. It adds the imposition of the margin deposit requirement together with the measures already taken by the government with regard to the tax application on motor vehicle imports is expected to curb non-essential imports of motor vehicles and ease undue pressure on the current account of the balance of payments and the exchange rate. The Minister of Finance announced that 30% cess imposed on sanitary napkins will be removed from today. Continuing in more local news, former Minister of Finance Ravi Karanayaka speaking in Parliament today expressed these views regarding the economy of the country. There are many problems in the global economy. You can't hide that. While the global economy is in such a manner, the government of the country should know how to respond to this. Otherwise, there is no point in having a government or a central bank if global economic issues are allowed to take complete control of the country. The main problem here is the fact that those who put the economy in negative figures in the 2000 are the people who are running the Ministry of Finance today. Starting from Chandrika Kumaratunga, the people who turn the economy to a negative direction are the people holding on to the economy. This is the issue. In 2017, we changed certain decisions. This was between the President and the Prime Minister and was changed with mutual consent. But after that, even on a single day, did the Finance Ministry hold discussions on how we ran the economy? No, they didn't. Today, they have portrayed us as terrorists within the government that we created. Today, when these things are happening, what we need to discuss here is how to fix this economy that has collapsed. This cannot be fixed with the opposition scolding the government and the government scolding the opposition. Don't forget that we get up on stages and tell the people that we will build a better economy tomorrow. When authorities were questioned, they constantly lie to the people. Such many truths were revealed yesterday at a forum organized by professional associations of Sri Lanka about the Singapore-Sri Lanka Free Trade Agreement. The forum was chaired by Minister of Development Strategies and International Trade Malik Samara Vikrama. Now, advisor to the Ministry, Mangala Yapa, and Secretary to the Ministry, Chandani Vijayawadhana, also attended this event. Repres representatives of many trade unions attended the forum, and we clearly saw how the subject minister was bombarded with questions. Let's have a look. The cabinet has authorized me to sign on behalf of the government. That's all I need. And we follow the instructions given by the attorney general, the, the, the advice given by the attorney general. If there is something wrong, by now the cabinet would have said, you have done something wrong. Okay. You don't agree with you, sir. Yes, yeah, so how can you say that when the cabinet has authorized, no, you think I can't even sign thing without the cabinet be approval? Cabinet can make mistakes. Bro. That doesn't make mistakes. Why? Mistake Why? Why? 
They are not infallible. The procedural mistakes are there. The national cabinets have made mistakes. Right? That is your opinion. That is not my opinion. It's the common sense. There is a debate whether this agreement was really understood by the general public. I also agree that we didn't inform the public about what we are doing. That is, we didn't go public, we didn't have any, this, uh, any propaganda on this. So there have been a lapse on our part. This is not only your country, it is our country. You cannot make a decision all by yourself. I did not make my own decisions. I presented it to the cabinet. Fourteen ministers to observe, including the president, were also there. Then there is no need to appoint a committee by the president. No one opposed. Everyone expressed their views. Only those who knew English were there. Arjun Mahendran and Ranil Vikramasinghe attended the discussions. How ethical do you think it is to represent Sri Lanka while holding a Singaporean citizenship during these discussions? What you are saying is wrong. He has not attended the discussions. No, that is right. When we visited Singapore while he was the governor of the central bank, we initiated discussions. We import Singaporean goods here. That is your opinion. It is completely wrong. You think there is no benefit to the country. We think there is. Investments will benefit us. The Board of Investments has received proposals from four companies. And they have been approved by the BOI already. Now we are looking at how we can allocate land for this. One, one okay, thank you very much, uh, Honorable Minister, for accepting our invitation and being here today. Okay, people, no chance. Can, can no, no, no. Uh, the Mr. Mangale Appa and Ms. Uh, Chandani will be here because uh, right. no Mr. No point. Uh, no point. Mr. Mangalapa is not part of the team. <laughs> <laughs> Minister said, so why do we discuss the team? There's no point in discussing the team. Uh, 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 but anyone doesn't want to ask, I'm not going to say, there is no point in talking to me. Mangala Yapa, the advisor to the ministry, was recently named as the head of the Sri Lanka Development Agency, but the act required to establish a company to hold the position has not been passed in parliament yet. This individual who was appointed to an illegal position is now creating awareness among the public about the Sri Lanka-Singapore free trade agreement. A new trade policy has been developed, it has been approved by the cabinet in August and it is available. So this trade agreement is not negotiated without a trade policy. This whole trade policies have been done with the trade policy that has been approved to be as well the cabinet. New trade policy, in fact, is a not, a, not a trade policy. That is your opinion, doctor. No, that is now, 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 a now you, you gave me a lecture. You are a professional. No? So I gave an answer. Okay. Yes, sir. Now, so that is that policy, is that is uh, that the policy is, making yeah. of the country is the cabinet or ministers. Yeah. They have approved the trade policy. That is also that is also that, is, that is a different opinion. So that is my answer. Yeah. 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 That's right. That's like always telling lies. That is the part of the ministry. So that is you are the one who is making allegations. And uh, yeah. story is no, you have to behave like a professional. Yes. Yeah. Biggest benefits in the Singapore trade agreement is attracting investment because Singapore is becoming a day by day a very expensive place to produce. So, if you can export to Singapore, you are basically accessing other markets. So, that is the channel that can be used. Now, our ships, what we built, were not used by Singapore. We do apologize for cutting in the middle of the story, but however, the 
news desk from the English news desk, Faraz Shagatali is here with us to share his expertise on this story. Uh, Faraz. Thank you, Sandra. I just want to point out to you uh, and to our viewers that uh, we finally have uh, the tacit uh, uh, agreement of uh, Mr. Malik Samara Rikrama that Arjuna Mahendran did in fact play a role in the negotiations about the FTA with Singapore. It's absolutely amazing that Arjuna Mahendran was able to do this whilst he was being investigated for a very serious offence which later on the Presidential Commission of Inquiry found that Arjuna Mahendran had acted mala fide and in the interest of Perpetual Treasuries, a company that his son-in-law had something to do as in he was a beneficial owner. Now, it's absolutely amazing and it shows the extent of uh, poor governance and depravity, in fact. When the Prime Minister and his close confidant, Malik Samara Vikrama, rely on a person who is being investigated by the authorities for what has later been described as the, the most serious financial offence or uh, the scam against the people of this country ever since independence. And that was that Arjuna Mahendran has actually played a role in the negotiations of the FTA with Singapore. It's absolutely incredible that they managed to do all this. They've done this with absolute impunity, with total disregard for the due process and procedures in this country. We have a written down constitution, we have written down rules, and both the Prime Minister and Mr. Malik Samari Vikrama have completely and utterly ignored this without due respect for what was going on. And at the end of the day, we are now told that they are trying to bring Arjuna Mahendran back. I leave it to you, ladies and gentlemen. Do you think seriously that Arjuna Mahendran will ever be brought back here? Especially when he was already part of this agreement with Singapore, the FDA with Singapore. Do think about it. Is this good governance? Is this what we were promised? All we have got is lies, lies, and absolute damned lies. Sandru, I'd uh, leave it back to you now. Thank you, Faraz. We're continuing in more local news, a question that many are asking these days. What is the full price formula? Leader of the Chief Opposition Whip MP, Andra Kumar Dizanayaka, made these remarks. The government is once again talking about the price formula, B plus V, V plus W. So some people say that the B stands for bond scam, V for tax and W for Vikram Singh. So that's the combination. The increase of price is affecting the fishing community. They do not engage in fishing anymore. They have received letters to open an income tax file. Are they ready to sell fuel for the fishermen for the previous price? The Colombo Stock Exchange says the trading of securities of MTD Walkers PLC has been halted. MTD Walkers PLC was at the center of controversy recently. Now, according to the Colombo Stock Exchange, trading of MTD Walkers was halted at 3.37 this afternoon. Sources confirmed that the CSE had sought clarification from MD Walkers PLC on debentures. However, as the company had not responded, this measure had been taken. Over the recent days, Jahan Amarthunga, the executive deputy chairman at MTD Walkers PLC, faced allegations of securing a loan to the tune of billions while holding a position of director at People's Bank. There is very big concern about the MTD Walkers company, which has been in the news very much in the last few days. Now, for the third time, the Securities Exchange of Sri Lanka has put this company on hold. Now, this time they have halted their trade uh, share transactions in the exchange. The question, the issue is now, before us is, when a company running such a big financial risk as identified by, the, by no one other than the Central Securities Exchange is continued to be given facilities by a state bank, in an unlimited manner, whether it causes a reason to be alarmed because of the dual position of Jehan Amaratunga, who is serving as an executive director of the company while serving in all these other important strategic positions and as a director of the People's Bank. I mean, this affair, the company is in serious trouble. There is a 2.1 billion debate issue by this company 
which is maturing on the 29th of September, which means that they have to pay this 2.1 billion uh, in respect of the debentures issued to the parties who have taken the debentures. Now, a, a company which is in this situation, can they do it? How are they going to do it? Sandhru, I, I, I'm back here because I need to tell you that the involvement of Malik Samaru Vikrama in all these matters is absolutely disgraceful. He has completely ignored the rules and regulations, a due process that is in place in this country and has been since independence. And Mr. Samaru Vikrama and his mate, who happens to be the Prime Minister of this country and the leader of the United National Party, no less, has completely disregarded. It is absolutely very crystal clear that it is Malik Samara Rikma behind most of these transactions, all of these transactions. If anyone wants to challenge us, well, please do so, we, because we don't, we, nobody comes into this newsroom without the proper documentation. We can stand up anything, we can stand up to the scrutiny of any proper court of law. Malik Samara Rikma, the bells have finally tolled for you. It is now up to the president, to Maitripala Sirisena himself, to take action. This complete disregarding of the law must stop, and it must stop now. Tomorrow is too late, the day after tomorrow is very too late. We must act now. We urge the president, Maitripala Sirisena, it's up to you, sir, for you to take action. And it's over to you again, Sandro. Thank you for us. Well, on a more positive note now, the report compiled on the findings during the gum at the Vaven Vavata Initiative was launched this evening at the University of Peradeniya. Now, this report was prepared by the gum at the team together with a panel of expert university researchers. Phase one of the Vaven Vavata Initiative in December last year focused on the Bellankadavala Cascade system and the Palugas Vava Cascade system situated within the Malvatu Oya Basin. Sri Lanka's ancient hydraulic civilization has been widely recognized as perhaps the finest in the world. Her sophisticated network of small tanks, canals and large reservoirs served her people for many thousands of years and ran into ruin only over the past 100 years or so. Phase 2 began in January this year and following which the compilation of the report began. The study included scientific geomapping of all weathers or tanks and canals in the Cascade system. Incidentally, the Sri Lankan agrarian system, the Elanga Gammana or Cascade Tank Village system in the dry zone was designated as a globally important agricultural heritage system by UNESCO. The report was published at the premises of the Peradeni University this morning. Vice-Chancellor of the University of Peradeniya, Upul Desar Naika, doctors, professors of the university, intellectuals, group director of the Capital Maharaja organization, Shivan Daniel, director general manager of News First, Yasarat Kamalsiri, Gammadda officials and villagers of Bellankadavala attended the event. The Vavin Vava study report was handed over to the gum at the team by the Vice Chancellor of the University of Peradeniya, Professor Upul Disanayaka. I am also a resident of that area. I have been nourished from the food that has been cultivated from that area. We have three main responsibilities as a university. First is to produce educated people to this country. Secondly, to create new inventions to the country. And thirdly, help the people. Gammadda is a project that we collaborate with much appreciation because this project is about the people. Today is the day we can all be proud of Sri Lankans. The Cascade system was designed and gifted to us by our ancestors thousands of years ago. We are proud to be able to inform the people, especially the children, with regard to this system. These were created by us, by our ancestors. But today, please do not be offended. Even the construction of a road requires assistance from China. Support from India is needed to build a house in the north. Recently, China was rewarded a contract to build 1,100 houses. So was it China that created these 900 cascade systems? Did India construct Sigiriya? Did America construct Rajagala? These were constructed by us.
I still remember Mr. Tilak prepared a report from the gum at the door to door project, which was done collaboratively with the Peradeni University in 2016. When this report was read by our chairman, he said the biggest problem in Sri Lanka is the lack of water. He said one part of the country suffers with drought and the other with floods. What is the issue? We need to look into this. <laughs> At this point, the villagers you all reside in are suffering with drought. We are currently suffering a bigger drought than you all. And that is the drought of knowledge, the drought that lacks knowledge about rain. We and the university students are in thirst to find knowledge to escape from this drought. <laughs> the gum at the Vavin Vava website was launched at the event and the theme song of the project was also released. Sri Prananda, a researcher on irrigation technology, also spoke at the event. The kings of our past pioneered this technologically advanced irrigation system in the country without the consultation of any foreign entities and this irrigation system is still used to this very date. At present, however, the situation is such that the weather overflows when it rains and almost completely dries up when it doesn't. It is understood by all that a survey such as this should be conducted if one intends to develop this ancient advanced system of irrigation. <laughs> Former Minister of Sports S.P. Dizanaka speaking to reporters today said that the Minister of Sports is delaying the elections of SLC through deceitful means such as making so-called changes to the sports law. He was speaking at a media briefing in Colombo. Let's listen to what the former minister had to say. <laughs> As a former Minister of Sports, I would like to say something. We have never heard that Faisal Mustafa has played a single of the 63 sports. We also don't know whether he has any sporting background. But regardless of what he says, I feel like he is doing this on purpose. By pointing at different issues such as the change in the bill, he is trying to postpone this election. I would like to say what we see is the result of his doings. So the complete responsibility of this loss must be borne by Minister Faisal Mustafa. <laughs> It is difficult for us to face these things without a cricket board because who will take the responsibility for the administration? Right now we have lost and everyone is bamboozled. If we ask someone to put their hands up and directly take responsibility for the loss, I don't think we have anyone because at this moment we don't have a cricket board, we don't have a chairman and we don't have an idea of our plan moving forward. <laughs> Now, during the tenure of the former chairman of Sri Lanka cricket in the past two years, Sri Lanka participated in 60 ODI matches. The team only won 18 and lost 37 of them. After the 2015 World Cup, Sri Lanka played in 15 tournaments. They only managed to win four of them. Besides, the defeat at the Asia Cup, who should be held responsible for the defeats the country suffered during the past two years. So who should be held responsible? Is it the former chairman of Sri Lanka Cricket, Tilanga Sumatipala? Is it Minister of Sports, Faisal Mustafa? Or Secretary of the Ministry, Kamal Padmasiri? Or is it the CEO of Sri Lanka Cricket, Ashwin De Silva? <laughs> Sigmata, one of Sri Lanka's most prominent heavy metal music bands, have won gold at the Asian Music Awards. They have achieved the milestone, overcoming more than 250 bands representing various genres from all around Asia. News First, Jama Ratnayaka reports. For almost 20 long years, they have been the pioneers and the champions of the Sri Lankan heavy metal scene. And they are none other than Sigmata themselves. I'm joined by uh, Suresh, Kenny, Afzal, uh, Shafiq, and Tisara. Uh, from 250-odd uh, bands and from various genres, actually, you guys have been placed first in uh, the Asian Music Awards. Right. What was the road like to achieve this milestone? Sometimes hard, sometimes fun, sometimes crazy, 
sometimes crazier than crazy, sometimes intense, sometimes insane uh, time throughout. It's been a long time coming, but it's been worth it because like we had a chat before and like I told you, it's the experiences in our lives that finally end up defining us. How was it like at the beginning? Uh, yeah, like um, if you take a bunch of school kids, it's like box I mean, it's you can watch the full interview on our website www.newsfirst.lk. And with that, we wrap up tonight's primetime news. Thank you for joining us. For the News First team, I'm Nicola Dezoza. Take care and good night.